Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about which other molecular compounds or proteins spike protein can interact with besides the ACE2 receptor, the receptor that it normally needs to infect human cells. My name is Dr. Michael Rashik of Merogenomics and before we go there, before we get started, I wanted to remind you we have two events coming up. Please stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets to those events, okay? Alright, so we already know that spike protein of the virus, our SARS-CoV-2 virus, can interact with ACE2 receptor and it needs that interaction in order to infect our cells and the better that interaction is the more likely it's going to be able to infect the cells so that's been pretty well worked out already but that's not the only protein on a cell surface on our cell surfaces or not in the only structure on our cell surface surfaces that this spike protein can interact with so let me give you a couple of examples one of them are are called toll-like receptors. It turns out that spike protein can interact with toll-like receptor number four. So what are toll-like receptors? Those are structures that are found on top of certain immune cells and these immune cells are called sentinel cells. Sentinels because their role is to scout the territory and see if there's any invading pathogens. So an example of those would be macrophages or dendritic cells. And they have these receptors, toll-like receptors, there's a whole family of different ones in order to basically recognize pathogens. So they, these receptors recognize very broad generic pathogen specific structures and toll-like receptors can then be activated by recognizing them and their role is essential to activate the immune system. It leads to inflammation. Inflammation is an important aspect of the innate immune system to start fighting infection at the start. The problem of course is if we have too much inflammation. And then another is uh, aspect of activating toll-like receptors is the fact that then they can also activate the remainder of the adaptive component of the immune system as well. Those are the ones where you start producing antibodies etc. So it turns out that spike protein can also interact with these. That perhaps should not be a surprise because other coronaviruses can also have been shown to be able to interact with toll-like receptor. So that's just one example. Another example I want to tell you is heparin. The reason why heparin is so interesting is because there is a good story attached to it and a bad story in terms of its uh, spike protein's ability to interact with heparin. So what are heparins? They are basically sugar molecules chain of sugar molecules are touched together so they're just structures made out of sugar and heparin so first let's maybe start with the bad part okay so that we can end on a good note in the video so first when heparin can interact with spike proteins the problem the reason why this might be a problem is because heparin can also promote aggregation of proteins in in our brain and that can lead to uh, neurodegenerate conditions. So such proteins that, that can aggregate and co bind to one another, they're called amyloid proteins. They can do this because they can use their own electric charges to, to attract each other. So recall in one of my videos, I, I was showing you how spike protein itself, its surface it has different electric charges. Proteins can use these electric charges to interact with each other and when you aggregate proteins such as the amyloid proteins you can cause neurodegenerative diseases. So this was suspected that perhaps spike protein might be causing that in the brain because we do know from COVID-19 patients that there can be neurological conditions associated with that infection. Okay, so it might be that, and heparin has been shown to bind to spike protein in a couple places and it might be that heparin promotes this type of um, aggregation of of amyloid proteins inside our, our brain. Now, also recall that in a previous video I mentioned that when the spike protein is cleaved, and it needs to be cleaved in order for it to perform its function, which is to help the virus fuse with our cells. I was mentioning that we still don't know that whether the cleaved off components are toxic or not. And it has been suggested by one group that they might be toxic because those cleaved components of the spike protein themselves, if you look at their amino acid sequence, it is the type of amino acid sequence that is known to typically be found in amyloid proteins that can promote protein-protein interaction. So it is, uh, it hasn't been validated experimentally, so this is only uh, a theory. So whether this component, the spike protein itself, could be promoting protein aggregation 
uh, such as those amyloid proteins inside our brain. However, just recently there is a publication came out that did show indeed that element of spike protein, tiny fragment, can actually aggregate as well. So that's the potentially bad part of heparin. However, now let me tell you about the good part. Heparin is also a treatment, right? It's a, it's a medic medical treatment after heart attack to prevent coagulation the reason why is because just like heparin can bind spike protein it can interact with other proteins specifically there are enzymes that are involved in a pathway that that um, stops coagulation and and that's why you can use heparin as a as a medication and heparin as well remember i was also mentioning in another video at the same time Sugar, um, spike protein before it can invade our cells interacts with sugar molecules that are decorating our cells before it interacts with the ACE2 receptors. So the an example are, of that are also heparin sulfate. Those are like imagine like skyscrapers made of sugar. <laughs> so uh, spike protein can interact with those so then heparin itself will compete with those other sugar molecules for binding and therefore potentially heparin might reduce binding of the spike protein to a 2 receptor and therefore my heparin itself might be a form of therapeutic treatment to prevent COVID-19 as well. So that'll be the good one. All right, if you stay with me till this moment, I wanted to let you know about the events. We have another COVID Q&A event. It was a lot of fun. I, I answer some questions that are that we basically collect from YouTube videos. And then after I answer those, it's an open mic. Anyone can ask any question. All of us are welcome. And if we cannot answer, we usually just end up digging in science to see what we can find whether we find something or not okay that's how it uh, how it works a lot of fun uh, and if you want to get a free ticket the first 10 people who subscribe to our newsletter after this video will send you free tickets and the link to the subscription is in the description below all right also i have another event coming up this is with two other experts it's a financial expert and mental health expert and together we build a program for business owners to offer to their employees for a holistic proactive well-being so this is a program to make sure that we can tell people how to tackle all of these arenas of well-being as effectively as possible so that we all can basically try to lead as healthy and comfortable lives as possible especially after all the trauma we recently had to experience and if you're business owners and you would be interested in in offering this type of program to your employees then the registration to those events are in are in the description below as well all right if you like this video give us a like Subscribe to the channel, share the video, leave a comment. All of these are great and a welcome. And uh, thank you to everyone for all your support. And we are looking forward to seeing you in another installment. Bye, everyone.